What's up Hobby Maniacs? In today's Hobby Hump Day tutorial, we're going to review and show you just what we think about these new Citadel Technical paints from the gloss shades to the new gemstone paints and these crazy cool new metallics that I think are really going to shake things up a bit for a lot of hobbyists out there. In today's early access hobby hump day tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new Citadel Technical Paints. These are a great range of new paints. I think there's a total of nine of them that just came out last week, and they're 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 great. Um, I think I don't think there's something that everybody out there is going to need to run right out and buy. They're very situational, but they will really help detail out some specific kind of um, uh, things to paint and sp some specific details like trims, like targeters, like viewports, you know, necrons, any big metallic, you know, trim on chaos, you know, just stuff like that. So it's, so it's kind of like very situational, but also for certain armies, it is a large portion of that army that you can really knock out using some of these new paints and i really like them i think i think they're a great addition to the citadel line um they, they never set, cease to impress with their technical game and i really like these um these gemstone paints now they're not metallics in their own right but they definitely remind me of some of the metallics when you use them over a mithril silver or not necessarily mithril silver but this new storm host silver um, layer paint from Citadel they really remind me of some of the old metallics that GW did back in the 90s like there was a color I had um, it was called glistening green I love that color I can't you know they don't make it anymore but you know you can almost replicate it with this way this waystone green uh over top of the storm host silver for like view screens and things like that like specifically the view screen on a bike you know so there's a lot of different uses for these out there and i'm going to try to show you as many as i can with the models that i have but remember you can do viewports you can do targeters you know think bigger than just what you know the smaller models i show you in this tutorial because there's a lot more stuff out there than you know the 30 minutes or so i had to spend on it on here but you can take it put it in your hobby tool chest add it to your hobby arsenal so that when you're out there working on your paints or on your models that you can really take start taking your stuff to the next level with all these more um the kind of like a i guess uh like an, an addition to you know these detailing tips you know with all the stuff out there so let's get right to it We have the three big glosses here. We've got Agrax, Earthshade, Nulm Oil, and of course the Arixland Flesh Shade. So the big, the big three triads of gloss coat here. And what this is going to do is give us this really nice kind of shiny coat on, on our metallics. But in order to get there, we have to use and you don't have to because the, the actual White Dwarf uh, recommends using the, uh, the standard lead belcher, uh, no, what is it, Iron Breaker and Rune Fang steel combo. But these are the new layer paints that g -Dub just came out with, the Stormhost Silver, the Fugurite Copper, and of course the Skull Crusher Brass, because Blood for the Blood Guy, of course, right there. So those are the big three, and then of course we're going to take a look at the new technical gemstone paints as well so this is going to be like a kind of like a, um, a three-part kind of all-in-one video a little how to and uh to kind of see how it all works right now if you have the white door uh from two weeks ago 122 with the total war cover right here they're going to show you some tips and tactics on how to use this stuff as well so you know even if you don't have this video or you know you want to pick up the white dwarf because it gives you some uh basic color schemes that might be the way to go now what i really like about these new uh layers uh paints right here is it's almost like an airbrush paint because it's super thin but it's like it's got a higher pigment almost right so it goes on kind of thick uh, mostly coats in like one pass but you know you still got to work it a little bit so there you can kind of see it it's not exactly the milky consistency that you would want for an airbrush paint but it's still pretty close like it's not it's not chunky and it's a little bit better than your standard layer paint so we're going to get right to it we're going to use some of this 
and I'm going to grab a base coat type brush. Now, for doing this stuff, um, I actually like to use larger flathead brushes, and that's what we're going to use today. So I'm going to use this, uh, this little Reaper Pro Paint brush I got right here. Reaper paints are Reaper brushes. I'm not sure if they're even available anymore. I found a few uh, sealed ones in my stuff here, but it's got this nice wedge tip that generally I use for washing. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm just going to go with like a normal kind of uh, base coat brush here and see if there's any difference. So we're just going to grab a, uh, a large a large brush here. Now I'm going to grab a painted Necron um, Immortal here actually and just kind of get right to it. Now if you have a bunch of uh, bottle caps, I like using these things for my palettes. They're super easy. You always have a bunch because you're drinking water and it helps get the paint right off onto to put it on something basically so I'm just gonna go in and you know a nice easy strokes you can see right here this stuff covers pretty good like I said right over black I mean that's thick there's no stroke lines I'm really digging how dense the pigment really is in this metal right here because I mean it's just coating it's just getting in there getting it done it's not chunky but it's just watery enough to to go nice and smooth so i'm not sure what they used here if they used a liquid pigment or something like that but i am really digging this new paint now it costs a little bit more but i mean it's almost worth it i feel like like this is a high quality paint right here and in my opinion you really get what you pay for when, when you know when it comes to paint so there you can kind of see get the idea i'm going to go through i'm going to base coat a whole figure um so that we can do some washing with these new glosses and compare it to the existing because I've got I got some Nolan Oil right here the OG shade um, that isn't the gloss so I wanted to show you guys basically how it compares right so here's an, here's one I already base coated before uh, I started recording here so you can see I literally did it in one one coat just like that guy right there so I'm gonna go in here now I'm gonna get my wedge tip that I really like. I like these for washing, right? And now I'm going to flip this thing over and I don't have a clean one. Don't have a clean one there. But fortunately, I have this little baggie full of plenty of clean ones. <laughs> so these are always nice to have handy. And I'm just going to grab a couple of those. And we're going to bust some of this new... What is it? We're going to do Nuln Oil, right? So we're going to hit up some of this new gloss called Nuln Oil. Shake it up really good because I never trust anything. If I don't shake it at least once. And uh, it, it definitely looks glossy. I mean, take a look at that. It's very clear, but also kind of glossy. So we're going to check how this basically goes on, right? Um, and I think I'm just going to I'm just gonna take some right out of the lid here. It seems like it'll, it'll work it pretty good. So we're just going to go in here. And I'm actually going to do the Necron with the gloss. And using this wedge tip, I'm just going to get in here and just hit it all. Just boom. Just get in there. Get all gangster with it. Just get the base coat down. And, you know, just get it all over. But with this wedge tip, what's really nice is I can kind of direct where I'm putting things as opposed to, you know, other types of brushes. And it's got that nice wide surface area, too. So I can work it back and forth and really get the coverage and the control it's like a twofer almost that i'm looking for so i'm going to go right up here onto the hands i'm going to stay away from that gun because i don't want to mess with the gun yet i want that to be the nice matte kind of color when you get in here we're going to hit it all that, that guy's really looking starting to pop right there he almost looks like something out of the terminator movies i always got a kick out of how the you know t-1000s are just like walking around in the battlefield you know dust kicking up crunching over skulls and they're just like super shiny and gleamy you know these little red eyes and stuff they're like yeah we're ninjas we defy all physics of battlefield dust and debris so there you can kind of see basically hit it all just the top torso, because we don't need to go too deep on this. And I don't want to waste a lot of time and bore you guys base coating a whole model, just put throwing a wash down. But I want to just make sure we get in this recess back here. And you can see it flows pretty well. It got in all those cracks and everything. Loving it. I really, really, really dig. This stuff seems a little thinner than the traditional mold oil. So got in all that. We're going to set this guy down over here. Dry our brush off. And we're going to let him kind of um just kind of dry out for a few minutes while we work on some of this technical paint right so for the technical paints i got a bunch of guys here uh some dire avengers and because they've got basically a bunch of gemstones 
so got all sorts of gemstones got a targeter a viewfinder thing up here now what they say in the instructions right is to just basically grab your your silver or you can use a different one um i think they recommend the one out of uh, what is it called it's called iron breaker or rune fang steel they say you can use that but i'm going to use this new technical because i feel like it's shiny it's nice and bright and we're going to see how easy it is to uh do a fine point with so i'm going to get my fine point here and always use a palette so you can get your access off basically right here and twist the to make a point right there which you can kind of see and then i'm just going to get in here right i'm just going to hit these I'm just going to hit these gemstones very carefully and like i said it's a very thin paint i'm really digging this new formula or this existing formula i'm just gonna you know maybe it's just a higher quality that they paid for so i'm just gonna hit all that nice and easy Get a few of these up here. Not now. If this is my my Elder Die Avenger, I would not be doing all these gemstones just because that's just too much, and it would kind of look very cluttered. I feel like, in my opinion. Um, so I'm gonna get all that, and then I feel like I'm gonna do this targeter over here in red or something, right? So I feel like a good complement color with red would be like that new Skull Crusher, right? So we're gonna hit some of the Skull Crusher, shake it up. Like I said, I never trust anything unless I shake it. That goes for all walks of life. Um, get a nice, look at that, nice good mix right there for surezies. And we're gonna get in there and just dot back there. Okay, nice and easy. And you can kind of see, it's a little trick, it's kind of a skill shot because you gotta work around the helmet there. And there you can see it's good to go. So got that. We're going to set him aside, let him dry, switch back to some of these other guys that we're working on here. So it looks like this Necron Warrior has, for the most part, dried. We got some, looks like it kind of uh, caught back here. Now, to this point, it's going to, it's already dried. Like I didn't catch this. So even if I wet the tip here, and pull it it's gonna be a problem so I don't recommend doing this because I already know that it's gonna mess it up and there you can see the line that it left but it definitely looks like you know kind of like residue and stuff so it's not 200% bad and this stuff's a little bit thinner than what I was used to so it actually didn't really kill it as much as I thought it was gonna so that's nice so remember always work your washes around until you set it down. And remember when you set it down, gravity's gonna do its thing. So you're gonna have to come back periodically and check as you go down the line, working on all your guys. And I'll tell you what, right now too, since we're waiting on that other guy to dry, we're gonna hit it up with some of this Nolan oil right here. And this is the stuff that's not glossy. So we can definitely see a transition, hopefully, between these two and kind of get an idea of exactly what it is and why the two effects are important because you know like i said you don't really want or maybe you do maybe you are trying to go for that terminator effect but you don't want your t100s you know or t1000s walking around the battlefield all like unaffected by physics and dirt and grime all looking super shiny like they just polished their elven armor right so that i feel like is something that you don't want but you are going to want it in some instances too like on elven armor or you know some ultramarine stuff so i know you can't tell in the camera and i can't really tell looking at it right here either until this stuff is completely dry now a little pro tip normally i have a little while well, i have it right there but i don't want to turn it on because the sound would be kind of irritating but normally i have a little fan that i kick on when i'm doing washes and stuff and uh, i just kind of let that go and work its way down the line as i work on you know eight or so figures at a time and get their get their dry on so this is going to be dark and not glossy null oil and then this is the standard glossy null oil and we should see a difference here in a few minutes when we're done with our gemstone paint which i am really super curious about okay so we're going to kick over to this guy right here that I already did his gems with uh, some of that Skull Crusher Brass. So I feel like the Skull Crusher Brass will go really good with the Spirit Stone Red. Uh, spoiler alert, I actually cheated. Now this stuff, and I kind of looked it up and got some ideas about how to do it. This stuff is thick. 
like you're not going to push this this is almost like that um blood for the blood god uh stuff it's it's a thicker paint but it's more opaque and also more um more vivid it's not like dried blood like this like if this would be the basic the normal paint version of blood for the blood god i feel like so i'm just gonna leave this over here and the, i think i like the key with this is is basically pulling it to across your gemstones um so that basically it kind of makes the effect of a transition and this stuff really really reminds me of the old metallic um not necessarily because it is metallic it's it's more of a gloss but it looks metallic over this but games workshop used to have this really cool metallic line um and one of my favorite colors was glistening green back in the day and it was um they had the flip tops that really sealed well and that was when they went away from that and they went to the bolter bolter tops that's when people really got really got mad about them switching their their paint quality and their paint line i think i think they just stopped uh buying that stuff from i believe it was coat de arms out of england um supplied them because you can still get coat de arms paint and they are very similar um to the old bottles that games workshop used to have in the 90s the ones that actually sealed so there you can see that's a very striking very striking solid um kind of sheen on these guys i feel like it's looking really good and i'm pulling it because what i'm hoping is that if I pull it, it gets stronger towards the top. It makes that faux, uh, almost makes that faux transition that we're looking for on these gems. And I'm gonna hit that um, that little targeter thing in the back there too. But this, like I said, this one's a kind of a skill shot because you gotta reach around the head here and get in here on the back targeter. And uh, it looks like I did a good job. So I'm happy with that. So there's that guy. And we're just going to kind of let him sit um, for a minute and just kind of do his thing and let that, uh, let those gems basically dry up right there. I'm not exactly happy with that primer coat there. I used some, um, some testers, model master sprays, and uh, they weren't exactly what I was looking for. Now over here, um, I did some gold as well because I wanted to try, I figured, well, gold is good enough for red, right? And green is almost kind of on the same wheel, but a little bit uh, opposite of red. But I feel like gold is still a good um, color for green. So I'm going to hit these up and I'm not going to waste your time with a whole lot of this. But basically, I just want to see what the green looks like over that gold as well. And that's, wow, well, that's really striking. I feel like that super looks good. I'm really digging that. So I'm pulling it just to get a good separation. This stuff is this stuff is very thick. It's very glossy. It's almost like a uh, almost like a syrup, almost like very close to a syrup. I feel like. Um, so there you can see it's come, starting to come through. I'm gonna hit this. Uh, I'm gonna hit this one right here with a little bit and kind of pull it. So hopefully we get that separation. We get that transition towards the top and get it looking looking tight now you can only imagine i mean it, it doesn't pop as much because it's on a gray primer model but you can definitely should be able to imagine at this point how it would look you know on a normal eldar and then here's some uh some of the silver ones i've pre-painted too and we're going to hit those with blue just because i really want to get a good idea on how this blue looks so we're gonna very uh very thick a very thick interesting paint to deal with yeah i almost feel like these these definitely remind me of those apple barrel paints that you get from walmart that aren't exactly the best to paint with but if you're on a balling out hobbyist on a budget then yeah it's all good um so there's that we're gonna hit that big gemstone right there nice sheen i'm really digging how this looks and i'm very careful to to plan my strokes and try to pull so that some of that sheen shows from underneath it. Like, so I kind of don't have to go back and dot it with some white or anything like that. This is kind of like a one step sort of thing. And I feel like this blue is the lightest of all of them. So we should be able to see if that theory is correct by doing it with that one the most. I feel like you can definitely see it in the camera there. If I can see it and this thing is only like <laughs> two inches wide, I feel like you guys should be able to see it at home there. Okay, so we're gonna hit that last one up top. Hopefully get that wash long enough to dry. 
pull this down. I got a little bit on the guy right there. But again, you know, if I was doing this for a commission or for my own, I would be a lot closer to it. I'm just making certain concessions for the camera itself. So you guys get a better view, hopefully. So there you can kind of see what we're working with and it does pull pretty good. And it's definitely starting to do exactly what I thought it was gonna do. Just making that faux transition almost really looking dope right there. So we're gonna put those guys back and let those guys dry and we'll see if that in fact is the way it turns out to be. And here is back to Mr. Necrons. So you can kind of get an idea here how the regular Nolm oil here is very matte. And this back here is very gloss, like it's almost very shiny. You can see it's on par with this, this shine, this kind of sheen. Here, we'll flip it to the back. And there you can see a little bit better perhaps that it's definitely sheeny. And I'm kind of digging it. I think it has its uses for sure. Um, especially if you're trying to do multiple washes over top of it because something gloss actually helps um, washes kind of flow over top of it. So if you plan on doing more work, I think that's a thing. I'm not exactly sure I would like my Necrons looking like this. I would look, I'd like them more like this, like kind of dirty and grimdarky, I feel like. But this is still pretty cool. It's a cool effect, like I said, to use with stuff like, um, you know, armor and fantasy or even maybe like some Slaneshi type stuff or just to do around the shoulder pad trim on like a marine or something so that appears shiny whereas the rest of the armor plate appears matte so there's always a use for shiny metals i feel like um but not quite in the way i think the games workshop maybe wants us to do so there's one last guy i got i got goldenrod here um all painted up and base coated again went on really well you know nice solid strokes and didn't have to really double up much but what i want to do with this guy is um this is the uh also the brass brass color right here you can kind of see so i really want to throw some of this uh, Reeklin flesh shade on it and kind of see how that how it reacts to that. And we'll let that dry while we're looking at our technicals um, and kind of get an idea if uh, how those work and if we like those. So I'm, again, I'm just gonna hit the tops here. I don't wanna bore you guys with doing the whole model because nobody really wants to see that. But I can tell you right now, looking at this, I'm really starting to see some definition pop. It goes on very easy, and I'm gonna be careful to watch my uh, my pooling back here, because you saw what happened with that last guy with the uh, the metals, right? I'm not exactly a big fan of that. You have to babysit these metals a lot, or your washes, rather, because it will get away from you. Um, but these seem to flow a little bit better. Maybe it's because they have that glossy element to it. Um, and, and gloss definitely helps, you know, kind of smooth the skids or grease the skids, so to speak, when you're going over those, uh, you know, just surface area in general, you know, um, so I'm getting down in these hands right here, just getting a good coat on everything, making sure I get down in these cracks, get all the eyeball and everything right there. And you can see it's starting to look, it's starting to look pretty good. Like this would be a good um, marine armor trim kind of a uh, coat. And like I said, it went on really good. So you could put that on a trim, a shoulder pad trim, you know, thunder hammer ornaments, you know, storm shield ornaments, anything that's got trim, perfect for chaos, obviously, all that trim, all those spiky bits everywhere. This would be fantastic for it. And you could even go hard in the paint and use a, like an Agrax um, Earthshade even or a black i just wanted to do this combo just to kind of see something a little different so we're gonna let this guy soak or kind of dry off and i'm gonna make sure i hit this these back uh, traps here so it doesn't get too crazy um you know with uh what we saw there in the past so there's all that and we're gonna set him down let him dry look for any bad spots there's a couple okay we're good there it's very important that you rinse out your brushes in between stuff too. Don't don't uh, cross the stream, so to speak, or you know you want a good brush. Um, I guess uh, maintenance is always super good, and in between color changes, I think it's very important to do. So let's kick it over and take a look at some of the stuff we already did. So here's the blue, and this was the last one we did right there. But you can definitely see how the transitions really shine through if you pull uh, that material through. 
you can definitely see that would go that would make uh, doing gemstones a lot easier especially on things like wraith knights that have them everywhere um, here's a couple of those greens I did definitely looks like the same thing you can see at the top there catching the light very cool stuff um, where's that red one here's the red one now the red one's a little bit thicker I feel like you can still see it right there in that light you can still see where it grabs it but it's not as pronounced I feel like so these this something like this would be perfect uh, to accent you know it wouldn't look good on fire warriors the green would look better on fire warriors or excuse me fire dragons but this this is really dope this is a dope effect too I feel like so you know there's definitely some things to use that for and on space marines you could use it for targeters for sure on vehicle targeters viewports you know ad nauseum every marine vehicle has a freaking viewport and this is some good tech to be on top of to save you time and money you know just getting it done so that's oh and here's that targeter that we did originally right there you can't quite get it in focus there it is you can kind of see so not exactly uh, rocket science and super easy to do I feel like so I think G-Dub's got something on their hands with the with the technical gem paints here um, now I imagine these would be pretty easy to dry out because they are they're very different they're, they're very thick they're very similar to that blood for the blood god it takes some uh, getting used to working them wise there's that Necron again very cool stuff and you can even use like those paints on the eyeball and stuff for these guys you know what I mean like as and even as like targeters and things like that like that would do super well in here and the plasma coils if you don't have an airbrush and you want to do something like that I could definitely see that being a thing now this guy isn't quite dry yet it is a little bit I feel like the wash is a little bit light so you're not seeing as much definition as I would like but compared to the bottom which is clearly gold you can definitely see some definition so that's an idea you know if you want something that's not too overpowering but this is still pretty good I feel like I'm definitely happy with this and I think I think it definitely has some uses with chaos and with Marines themselves but you could always hit it with some of the Agrax or you know the Nolan oil itself or a mix between the two which I like to use for my purity seals a little bit of this and a little bit of this um, kind of mixed together and sometimes I mix in a little flesh shit I forget I change the recipe all the time very important write down your recipes <laughs> so you can duplicate it across multiple stuff so that's pretty much it for this one I hope you enjoyed my review of the new technical paints and some ideas on how to use them Spiking bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today.